Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George, and today we're going to talk about why the idea of quote-unquote alternative possibilities is the free will illusion. Okay, um, basically the, um, there are philosophers who claim that anytime we make a decision, we could have chosen to do otherwise. And um, that's what, you know, they refer to that as having an alternative possibility. And they claim that because we could have done otherwise, um, that how somehow would give us a free will. Um, so, yeah, so like, you know, very, you know, just getting straight to the, to the heart of the matter, Let's say we did choose otherwise, okay? Let's say we could have, um, and we did, in fact. Well, the only way that could have happened was, well, firstly, if, if we lived in a different universe, because, like, if our universe is evolving from moment to moment in a completely ca causal fashion, one moment of the universe completely determining the subsequent moment which completely determines the subsequent moment and if that cause and effect evolution of the universe you know naturally goes into the future but is the result of um, of um, that causal regression you know that you know the, the universe a million years ago, ago basically determining what, what's happening now. If, if that's the case, um, then, um, then that otherwise decision that we would have made would, would be equally causal. You know, um, you know again, that's, that's one way to, to kind of like very um, clearly um, just, you know, explain. I mean, it's, it's funny because, like, when I do shows, ordinarily I don't do shows refuting um, some of these lesser-known um, kind of um, defenses for free will because, like, <laughs> when, as a scientist, when I try to... I, I much prefer to kind of, like, present and think about something that's true and scientific and logical and, you know, rational than, than to kind of, like you know, have my mind wrap itself around things that just don't make sense. I mean, that's, you know, that's just me. I don't know if that's more, more, um, you know, more common than, than I would think. But, okay, so like, so what happens is, yeah, um, the first, first part of this is that like, well, no, um, we could not have chosen otherwise because the universe is not otherwise. In other words, like, there's only one universe. Um, and at this point, I have to kind of, like, pause to, um, to explain that, for example, the, um, the most popular... This, is, this show is going to get a little technical, that's all right. The most pop popular um, description of quantum reality today is called the many worlds interpretation of quantum um, mechanics and um, it is it is kind of like accurate to the extent that it is deterministic or causal that it, it doesn't um, you know like for example the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics basically would have us to be believe that because you can't simultaneously measure the position and momentum of a particle that that somehow makes the particle behavior uncaused which is absurd but um but no i think to me the absurd thing i think about the um the many worlds interpretation is that like you know basically they um it claims that anytime we um we make a decision there are like an infinite number of possible alternatives to that decision. This is kind of like very similar to the alternative possibilities thing, I guess, that we could have made. And in, in fact, the many worlds interpretation says that there's actually a universe in which that 
choice that we didn't make, you know, is actually playing itself out. Now, no. I mean, like, you can't know that. You can't know. There's, there's absolutely nothing in our reality, in our science, in our logic that would, um, that would, that would present any kind of evidence for that, you know. But anyway, <laughs> um, so, um, so the, idea, the idea is that um, the, um, the current, the, the best scientific understanding of reality is that it is causal, that the universe is causal, that cause and effect governs everything, and more um, to the point that there is only one universe, okay? Um, think about this. Universe, by definition, uni means one and verse. This is another thing that I've got to look up. I've got to, um, anyway. There is only one reality, you know, so, so any kind of like, quote unquote, other kind of reality, I mean, it would have to be within that one, you know. So, uh, so that that is really the reason why an alternative possibility, why why we could never have chosen to do otherwise, um, except in in like in consideration. In other words, like we said to ourselves, well, all right, all right. Here's how. No, no. Here's how logically we could have chosen otherwise. Because it, it depends on the um, on the preposition or premise that the universe would have been different than it was or is. So yes, if we lived in a different universe, if everything was different, if the universe was different, then certainly we could have done otherwise. But again, let me reiterate: even if that were the case, whatever choice we made, that otherwise choice that we we made would have a causal history. It would have a different universal causal history, naturally, but it would still have a, a causal regression that, um, that clearly, completely uh, makes free will impossible. Okay. Um, I've got a cold, or I'm, no, I'm battling a cold, and so I don't want to work too hard right now, which is all right. Uh, I've explained this. I mean, like, you know, yeah, that's, you know, I don't want to like, sometimes like, it's an unfortunate kind of convention in philosophy that um, some reason philosophers tend to be very wordy, very verbose. I mean, they'll take like 10, 20 pages, 30 pages to kind of like express what should be concisely and, and, and more clearly um, expressed in two. You know, but... Um, but so, yeah, so I don't want to, <laughs> you know, I've made the point, you know, the alternative possibilities, you know, we could have chosen otherwise um, defense for free will just doesn't work. It's illogical. It's clearly illogical, which, which then, you know, it, it, it kind of like, I'm not going to get into this. I'm going to do a show on like, well, how do these, you know, how do these otherwise seemingly intelligent professors, you know, they've got PhDs and all. Um, get something so simple, so wrong. I'll go into this. Okay, I have a feeling. I mean, this is a guess. Um, our educational system is very tied in with our economic system. In other words, like, yeah, they, they kind of teach us how to, how to, like, enjoy life. Not, they don't teach us that much about that. But they teach us stuff that are kind of, like, personally... Yeah, they teach, I mean, like, come on, they, they teach a lot of, of stuff that is for our, our interest. But to a great extent, um, our educational system, K through PhD, is kind of like preparing us to do, to contribute to society, which is great. I mean, there, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but the problem comes when... Um, uh, I am tired. I, I, I lost my train of thought. Um, all right, again, I do this. Like, um, I, um, this is a third of, of three shows today, and uh, I, um, I'm battling cold. I, I should have stayed home yesterday, but I had to go into Manhattan and spend a long day, so I'm a little tired. And I mean, it's not, not so bad, but yes, it's my mind doesn't want to work, all right? So, so, so basically what I'm saying is like, if I had a free will, yeah, my mind would say fine. And even like yesterday, I was like, you know, I was like with a very good friend of mine and like, you know, I just like, 
yeah, you know, when, when you got a cold, you can't think that well. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so I think that the, the education system is geared far more toward the retention and retrieval of information than the logical processing of information. In other words, what I'm saying is that we're taught far more and we're rewarded far more for remembering what we're taught and then being able to like, you know, say it or write it or implement it than we're taught how to think about what we're taught, how to think about things in general. I mean, logic. Um, most people go throughout, um, through college, through, through high school, through, through an entire education without ever having taken a course on logic. So, so you know, while this is a guess, that, that would be my, um, my uh, strongest guess that, um, that the philosophers who get this, who, who actually believe that there are alternative possibilities that would, you know, make a free will possible, I mean, um, they, I would suspect they're, they're quite strong on the memory, you know, and retrieval aspect of, of our, um, our thinking. But, you know, they, you have to conclude that they're actually quite weak on the logical deduction and, and, um, and reasoning that goes along with, you know, that, 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 that basically we apply to what we learn, you know, to understand its nature. Okay, and, and you can't blame them because they don't have a free will, so like, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> All right, um, what else? Uh, my sign. I'm done with, 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 with this part of it. I'm just going to like talk extemporaneously for the next 15 minutes. And uh, I, I thought I had something pretty cool to say a while back, but maybe I'll come back. Yeah, I want to like um, this transcendent illusion of free will sign. I, um, I carry it in town. Oh, I remember. Yeah, so this is my, my new set. I, 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 I wanted to kind of like present that, that transcendent illusion of free will sign because like, you know, I talked about it and I wanted to show you what it's like. I carried it like through Manhattan, not up and down Fifth Avenue once in a while. I've been taking it to the Occupy um, um, demonstrations at Zuccotti Park, you know, Liberty Square. And so like, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it as part of the set. Yeah, I, think it was, I just wanted to show what it looks like. But yeah, you know, it adds color to the set, you know. So anyway, okay, and yeah, what I wanted to say before is like, I generally do commercials for, um, for my friend The Messenger's show in Manhattan called The Myth of Free Will. And um, and it's cool. The reason I can do these kind of commercials is like we don't, we don't make any money on this. This is great. It's all you know public access. Um, but anyway, so like I usually do commercials for that show, but I I don't I don't do commercials for this one. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's because you're watching them. You're like, but but the, I I think the one thing I want to um, say about this show is like well first like we're at episode forty five you know which includes. Um, which doesn't include eight episodes that I taped with other, um, a few other people, so it's actually like, you know, 53. But, um, but this, what I want to say about this show is like in addition to it being ca um, cable cast every week by the White Plains Community Access Television Station, where I'm, you know, um, uh, video recording this right now, um, the station has a website, and it actually has begun presenting all of our shows live. So, like, you know, this show airs every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Uh, so just, you know, boot up your computer, go to... Um, I'll have to get you a, um, a web address. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what their um, URL is, but I'll, I'll do that maybe in the next show, hopefully. Uh, so, all right, that's enough with the commercials. Um, so this is going to, the rest of the show is going to be kind of like um, whatever, whatever the universe, um, it's like with everything, whatever, whatever the universe compels me to say is what I'll say, except, you know, it's going to be unplanned. Ordinarily, the universe compels me to plan <laughs> what I'm going to say, you know, at least the title. I, I did, you know, it was cool. I did, um, the first show without a um, without notes. This this show I um, I had a few notes. And I'm not sure I needed them, but but anyway. Um, okay, so what are we gonna talk about? It's like 12 minutes. Um, I 
I don't know. <laughs> and again, it's just like, you know, this is like a perfect thing because think about it. If I had a free will, I would know what, to, what I wanted to talk about at any moment, at every moment, because I would be willing myself to um, have something to talk about, to have something to say. <laughs> and, all. and, you know, naturally I'm, um, I'm saying stuff right now, but it's not really what, you know, what I would prefer to say. It's kind of like, yeah, let's, ex let's, let's explore why free will is impossible from the standpoint of the stuff that we can't do. You know, I mean, like, if I had a free will, my last show before this was called The Happiness Show, and it, it was pretty much as, nah, it, it was pioneering, not as pioneering as this show, but basically it, it helped to really um, ramp up this happiness revolution we're going through. And, um, and I taped about 140 episodes of it. And so, like, it basically, you know, presented the idea that happiness is what everything is really about. I mean, that's why we're here. Aristotle knew this, you know, how hap happiness is the only goal, everything else is a means. He said something to, to that effect. I used to start each show with uh, happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. <laughs> and so here's the thing, like, relate that to this show, Exploring Illusion of Free Will. If we had a free will, we would, comp we would choose, we would freely choose, because why would we choose not to? We would freely choose to be completely happy, happy every moment of every day. We would, we would choose as I would choose right now if I had a free will, to have a lot more energy. Because again, this, this cold has just sapped my uh, stuff. And, and, and actually, you know, there's kind of like a serendipitous quality to this. Because like, you know, I'm kind of complaining about the cold and all, but I think it may actually be helping my presentation. Because like, when I have more energy, my mind is like just darting around a lot more. And I, I talk more quickly. And um, I'm not sure I explain things as clearly as uh as when when um when i'm slowed down by lack of energy whatever um so yeah again if if we had a free will we would be completely happy all the time um if we had free wills if we had a free will if free will was an illusion we would completely be good all the time think about this who who out of their free will would willingly choose to do something that they know is wrong because like you know like what happens when we do things that are wrong you know either nature or others you know especially when they buy into the illusion of free will or we ourselves to the extent we buy into the free will delusion will tend to punish ourselves you know you know we're bad we did something wrong but again you know if if if, if we had a free will if, if human beings have a free will we'd be perfect um perfect angels. I'm not saying that that may not eventually happen because like and I, I used to like I'm Jewish and I used to be you know orthodox Jewish and um, one of the beliefs then and, and you know this is like I'm saying this this is a scientific show but I like to kind of like bring in the religious component because you know our society our world is very religious but um, but one of the one of the teachings I don't know if it's Talmudic um, or before that, but um, I think it's Talmudic because it's basically um, there's one understanding that says when when the Messiah comes, which in today's world of Reform Judaism means more so when we enter this messianic era that might be let's say equivalent to the age of Aquarius. I don't know. Um, basically, at a certain point um, in time human beings will no longer have to be taught right from wrong that we'll just like know this instinctively and everybody will just like um, automatically do do right you know not do anything but right and um, now that would be cool you know but naturally since we don't have a free will we have to like wait and see if the universe does have that plan for us if God you know if you want to um, express it theologically wants us to do that and um, whether it's rationally scientifically possible to not ever do anything wrong I'm not sure I've given that 
question enough consideration to um I'm gonna have to come up with an answer, I guess. I don't know, or maybe I'm just too tired. But um ah, you get the point. Okay. Um what else? Six minutes and thirty you know what I want to do? All right, I want to challenge myself. There are a lot of, um, yeah, I got to do this. There are a lot of YouTube now. What I want to do on a, on a future episode, there are a lot of YouTube videos where people kind of like in two, three, four, five minutes explain why free was an illusion. And it's kind of like, you know, a lot, of them, a lot of them are decent. So I want to kind of like start presenting them. But the reason I'm not going to do it now is because I don't want to like hem myself in. If I were to say that, you know, if I were to stop now, like, with six minutes left, that means I would have to kind of, um, I'd have to request the permission of, of whoever, like, did the video to, to have it on the show, and, you know, then I would probably want, you know, send them a release and all, because I like to do this all um, professionally, whatever, but, but nah, <laughs> I just don't want to, you know, because, I mean, it's like, I've, I've been doing a lot of work recently, a lot of work, and, and, it's going to be done hopefully within by next week. So I'm like just, I'm um, looking forward to taking a vacation, just really enjoying the holidays, you know, with friends and family and stuff. And and so yeah, I don't think I have to tape another episode until like the beginning of January, you know, because this is like we're about five or six episodes um, ahead of schedule. Um, so yeah, but yeah, in, in the future, what I'd like to do when I have more time and when the universe compels me to, to want to do it more so, because apparently maybe I don't want to do it enough right now because of the work involved, um, I will. I'm, I'm going to, I'll um, try to contact, you know, these people, you know, and like I can only like present, I think, maybe let's say 10 minutes of these kinds of videos on this show because I think there's a... Um, I think Manhattan Neighborhood Network and maybe this station also has a kind of um, requirement that the programming has to, to be at least half um, original, you know, because like, for example, there's a lot of music shows where um, where the, the host will just like, well, <laughs> the host will present videos. Um, and so I, I, anyway, I'm, I, I, I'm glad I talked about this because like it'll be in my mind now, I, you know, that like, Talk about like how why we we do what we do. Okay, right now I've conditioned myself to much more likely than not put these YouTube videos in the show because I'm conditioned basically to when I say I'm going to do something, I I it um, brings me pleasure to go through with it and displeasure to not. Now, granted that that is the free will illusion because I shouldn't be taking responsibility for any of this because I don't have a free will. <laughs> But uh, so it, it's like, you know, it's just something more to, uh, to have to like uh, rationally struggle against or whatever. Um, I'm feeling good because like, you know, God, yeah, it's like three minutes, three and a half minutes. It's funny with, with these shows. OK, yeah, I went into Manhattan. I didn't decide what I was going to do today until a few hours ago. You know, um, when I came up th with the titles, and one of them was an off the cuff. The last sh last show was, or the first show was an off the cuff, where I just like talk about whatever, and um, and the other show I just had like the title with no notes. This one, this one I have notes on because because um, I actually did it before, but th there was like a glitch in the um, software or something where for whatever reason it just like didn't record, but. Um, but you know, so I had it. So I'm not sure what I'm trying to say. Just like um, I think I'm like I'm already in holiday mode. You know, <laughs> the less work right now, the better, which is cool. Um, okay, what else? We've got about two and a half minutes. Just want to mention there's a um, one of the results of this show and the meetup that I started in Manhattan, exploring illusion free will meetup that meets monthly. Um, and I started, I think, in April 2010. One of the results of this is that, like, before that meetup in this show and now the Messenger Show in Manhattan, there's hardly anything um, published um, relatively recently, you know, especially in magazines, on this this question of human will. Um, since 
since the meetup, and I guess especially since this show, you know, because the meetup, I'm not sure. Um, it led to it in, in a certain way because, like, I mean, the causal connection between the meetup and the show is because, like, the reason I decided to do this show was because I asked a member of um, of our meetup, Nomi, if he would co-host it with me, and he and he he, he agreed. So we started doing the show together, but for various reasons, it didn't work out. But that's certainly a reason. Um, but anyway, I think this show, yeah, um, has led to there's a there's a new article in Scientific American Mind about this. Um, new Scientist magazine came out with a pioneering um, article. When was it? It was like um, it was this April, I think. So a year after the the meetup started, and maybe about a few months after um, we started broadcasting this show, like in, in January of 2010. Um, it was a New Scientist article. that It was a cover story, actually. It, it said, you know, um, the, the title was Free, Free Will, The Illusion We Can't Do Without. So naturally, when, when the cover and the title is referring to free will, not just as like, do we have it, but that it is an illusion, that kind of like means that um, people are getting this. And so that's good. So, all right, we've got 34 seconds less. And, and the universe just like, because um, like the universe just said, wait a minute, I don't, have to, I don't have to go to the end. I can stop now if I want. So apparently that's what the universe wants me to do. Hope you're having a good day. And I hope um, you join us next time on Exploring Illusion of Free Will. Thanks.